If you've been using Power BI for any amount of time, you've probably realized that there is more than one way to perform an action in both the Power Query Editor and the Power BI Desktop. I'm Justin Vogel from Pragmatic Works, and in this video, I'm going to cover my top five transformations in the Power Query Editor. The theme here is planning ahead. Bad things happen when we don't think like Power BI thinks. Good things happen when our thinking aligns with how Power BI works. These tips are meant to save time, yes, but mostly to reduce the amount of time you spend having to redo something. The more often you have to go back, the more exposure you have to errors. You'll make better data models if you're doing some more shaping up here in the Power Query Editor closer to the source of the data. So let's dive right in. Tip number one, prepare to append. Let me show you what I mean. Here I am in the Power Query Editor and I have two tables that I want to append. Now, both of these queries have very similar column structures and column names. We know that appending means that we're stacking one table on top of another. So we're concatenating the rows of the tables. Let's take a look at what we have in the existing tables. We have our US sales data here with five columns, product, date, zip, units, and revenue. And we have our international sales, which have the same five columns plus an additional country column. Let's see what's in that country column. It's not just Australia. If we click load more, we can see some more of the countries in our data set. Australia, Canada, one, two, three, four, five, six different countries. So let's cancel that and look at the name of the column, the name of the column's country. So what will happen here if I try to append U.S. sales with international sales and put one on top of the other, I'm going to end up with this other column that has a bunch of null values, right? Now, of course, I could then do some data cleaning to address those null values. But what I would like to do is prepare for this append. So let's go up here to our U.S. sales. There's a couple of ways to add a column. I'm going to do a quick conditional column here on my U.S. sales, and I'm going to call that column country, just like on my international sales. Before I go any further, let's investigate what easy conditional statement I could actually write. If I look at any of these columns and something in that column is greater than or equal to, so let's take units, for example. If units is greater than or equal to one, let's say, then I could output USA. Let's see if that would work. Let's go to my units, load more. Let's see what's in this column. Here's what's in the column. Start, there are no zeros, and starting with one all the way through, it looks like there's some gaps, but ultimately everything is greater than one. So my idea is going to work here. My conditional column is going to be called country, and I'm going to say if the column name units has something greater than or equal to one, then I'm going to output USA. Now, this will give me that column that I'm looking for so that when I append, I don't have to deal with null values. The else statement here, I'm gonna put null just to catch anything in case I'm missing something, but I should be okay here. Let's click okay. We have a new column. Let's see what's in it. There are no values in this column except USA. Now, when I append this table to my international sales table, my columns will match. There's data in my columns. I don't have to worry about null values later. Everything is done ahead of time. So I've prepared to append. Uh, let's just make sure that our data types are the same, text and text. And the next thing I can do is go to home, append queries, append these two queries as something new. International sales and U.S. sales is going to concatenate the rows from both tables into a single table. Here's my new table that I can now give it a name. Let's take a look at what's in the country column. We should see seven countries now, including USA, and no other values, and we do. Australia, Canada, Germany, Japan, Mexico, Nigeria, and USA. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and our append is ready to go. Don't forget to disable the load on those other original queries. We have our new one here that we made from those two. Tip number two. Use the go to column. The go to column is under the view tab because it's not on the home tab. Sometimes we overlook it. Let's click on the view tab 
and use go to column. When we're trying to get an idea of what's inside our data, the go to column is ideal because of that search bar up at the top. So let's just get a sense of what we're dealing with here to give us an idea of how we want to model our data as we move from cleaning into modeling. So let's take a look at anything that has to do with date, for example. As soon as we type it in the search bar, we have everything that has the word date in it. So we have three different dates in this table, plus key columns ready and available to us for our data modeling. Let's take a look at something else in our go-to column. How about all of our key columns, right? Anything that has the word key in it is now displayed, gives me a good idea of what I might use when I build out my data model. For example, I might have a sales territory key in a sales territory table, and that sales territory key will also remain here in my fact table. So using the go to column is a really good idea. It's just kind of hidden under that view tab and we need to remember it so that we can get a better idea what's in our data. Tip number three, we're back on the home tab in a place that's a little bit more familiar to a lot of us. We're going to use the choose columns button. The choose columns button on the home tab gives us a list of all of our columns and we still have a search bar here. The difference between this and go to column is that here we can select or deselect some of the columns that we want to keep or not keep. So go to column is a little bit safer. We just have to remember that it's under the view tab. This is the choose columns. Now, this is great for when we actually want to start doing our modeling. For example, let's take a look at anything that has to do with product. Maybe follow my cursor here. Product ID has to do with product for sure. And because it has ID in the name, we're looking for ID or key. These are usually going to serve as key columns. So product ID, the product itself, that's probably the product name. That would be a good indication of something to keep in product. Product category, product segment, and perhaps the manufacturer information for the products. Everything else after that has to do with unit cost, unit price, possibly have to do with product, but everything else has to do with geography. So we're going to leave that alone. So it looks like we're going to have a geography table. It looks like we're going to have a product product table. It looks like we're going to have a customer table so we can start to see our star schema come into play. So now that I have that idea in my head, let me go ahead and duplicate the transactions query. I'm going to rename it right away to product and I'm going to use the choose columns feature again to check and uncheck. Now remember, we can always right click on a column and remove it or remove other columns. We could also multi select columns and remove other columns, but we become error prone. This way we have a list. Let's deselect everything and select product ID, product category segment, and we'll take that manufacturer information with us as well. So here we have the model coming into view but we're still in the Power Query Editor. So we click OK here, and we have our product table. Now remember I said we'd probably use product ID as that key column. So let's go to product ID, right click, and remove duplicates. And now we have one product ID. They're all unique values. This is perfect for a dimension table in our data model. That's tip number three using the choose columns feature, especially when you start working into the modeling phase of your project. Tip number four, check those data types. This should be on anyone's list in the Power Query Editor. So let's take a look at our date table here. First of all, date columns need to be formatted as dates. So this one here is formatted as a combination of text and whole number. What I need to do is click on that and select either date or date time. I'll go with date in this case. Now I've marked that as a date column. That data type as a date column is critical to the relationships that we make in the modeling phase. But let's talk a little bit about data types and how they could be important in other ways too, beyond the date column. Let's look at the year column, for example. Right now, the year column is whole number, right? Whole number, one, two, three, does a couple of things for us. It's better for us when we want to filter let's say between 2019 and 2023, we want to look at the COVID time period, for example. If that's the case, then we want to have filters here that are number filters. 
so that we get this between option right here. If we do not have our year listed as a whole number, then we will not get this between filter. This between filter allows us to look at that range. Now, if we were to change it to text, that's fine. We'll add a new applied step here, but look at our filter options. We don't have the same options. We don't have the between option. So we have text filters, although fundamentally nothing has changed in our data modeling experience here. They are still 2010, will still show as 2010, whether it's text or a number, but our filter options change. The other thing to consider is over here on my US sales, let's take a look at zip. Well, zip here is currently data type whole number. Now, whole number data types, just like we had in years, are going to aggregate when we get into the Power BI desktop. Now, is it helpful to have the ability to sum up a column of years? 2010 plus 2010 plus 2010 plus 2011 plus 2012. That's not really a useful metric for us, but Power BI will do that automatically when it comes to whole numbers or fixed decimal numbers. So what we need to do is consider when do we want numbers to be text? Well, when it comes to zips, let's take a look. Right now, zip came in, the column itself came in as a whole number. And because it's a whole number, the leading zeros are being dropped. So as soon as I change it to text, the leading zeros are no longer dropped. So with zip being a whole number, what happens with a whole number column? We drop leading zeros. So if there is a leading zero to be had, we would need to change this to text data type. Sometimes numbers in a column need to stay formatted as numbers for our filtering purposes. And sometimes we need to change them to text for other reasons, like in the case of zip codes. Tip number five, use column from examples. This is the ultimate time saver in the Power Query Editor. Let's take a look at our transactions table. And I'm just going to scroll over here to see what we have in here that needs to be cleaned. I have a couple of columns that stand out right off the bat. I have a city column, which is really city, state, and country. And I have an email name column that is really email with delimiters. We have brackets, and then we have, looks like a customer name. So we have email and name in the same column. We have city, state, and country in the same column. And we also have this other column here for state. So we already have a column for state level analysis. But what if we wanna look at just city and state together? We wanna get that USA, that country name out of there. So let's go to select the column, although I'll show you how you don't have to. You can do from all columns, but I'm going to be very specific with Power BI and tell it to only use this selection. So the selected column is city, and I'm going to make a new column. I'm simply going to start typing in my preview column that I'm going to say this is Miami, comma, FL, and that's it. Hit enter. Let's see if we were able to extract simply Miami and the state of Florida. So far, so good. Let's see. It looks like everything worked. Load more. Yes, it looks like everything made it into our new column. So what we can do is just simply rename this city state. And then once we extract the country name out of here, we will be able to get rid of that particular column. So let's go from selection again, type in USA, click enter, and I've removed text after a delimiter. Let's click OK and rename this country. So why would I use column from examples instead of uh, splitting by delimiter, for example? Well, if I split by delimiter and I forget to include the space, and now when I go to append, I could have an issue or when I go to a merge or concatenate or any of, the, any of the combinations of things I could do in the cleaning process in preparation for modeling could be off simply because I left a space or did not remove a space uh, when I was supposed to. Column from examples does exactly what I prompt Power BI to do. So now that I have both of those, I could get rid of city, this column here, because I've extracted what I want from it. And I still have the state column for state level analysis. I have city, state together if I need that. And I have country level for country level analysis. One more thing I can do with column from examples is take a look at this email name. Now, this is a good example of not missing those delimiters or not missing spaces in there. So let's go to column from examples. I'll go from selection and I'll just call this, let's say I make a last name. 
So now I've selected only the last name. I typed it in there. Power BI goes down every column and extrapolates that information over. So now I have a new column that I can name last name. All right. Now I could do the same for first name. I could do the same for email name. Let's click OK. Let's do another one for first name. And finally, we'll do one more to pull that email address out of there, especially with those delimiters. You can see I've got colons and I've got commas and I've got spaces and I've got parentheses. So now I'm going to extract one more column from this example. All I have to do is spend the time to carefully type one example in there. And I've got all the email addresses extracted by delimiters. So in this case, I've got no extra spaces. I've got no extra delimiters hanging out. And I can name this email address. Click OK. And it looks like I've got everything I need. So column from examples is a great way to do some cleaning and some splitting or even concatenating columns without making some of those little subtle mistakes that we make when we use the split by delimiter feature, for example. All right, the theme here was planning ahead, but to do so is to think like Power BI works. How does it understand data? The more we know about that, the better we get at using Power BI. If you think of something that should be on my top five list, put it in the comments for me. And don't forget to check out our other top five videos on our YouTube channel and over on our on-demand learning platform. Go further with Power BI in our beginner, intermediate, and advanced Power BI courses. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And don't forget to tell me what you think should be on this list. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.